but it directly refutes the idea in a meta-analysis that that a high saturated fat diet is going to cause insulin resistance. It directly, they found the opposite, that in these studies where the saturated fat consumption was high, but with carbohydrate consumption being low, there was a significant improvement over better than the low fat diet. So that is a direct refutation of the plant-based advocates who are calling for everyone to avoid saturated fat. This meta-analysis directly refutes that. So very high impact. I hope that leaves somewhat of an impression on you. Now, throughout this conversation, there's been one component missing. So remember, I started the conversation, this little lecture, um, by describing to you how saturated fats are capable of causing insulin resistance. And now we've challenged the idea that dietary saturated fat is contributing to that. And even if we zoom out to the 30,000 foot view and look at just global and or certainly within the US, dietary trends, over the past 50 years or so, the actual amount of saturated fat we've been eating has been going down steadily. It kind of came up a little bit from the 1930s up through the 1960s or 70s, and then it came down. Um, and yet, over this same time period, the amount of insulin resistance globally, certainly within the U.S., has just been steadily going up, up and up and up. I mean, su substantially. Just at a surface glance at this really high level, at a population level, we can see something doesn't work here. Now, this is, of course, correlational. And I'm very mindful and appreciative of the weaknesses in this. But even if we use the terribly flawed view of a correlational study, we can see that there's just nothing to this. It doesn't work. This dog don't hunt, as they may say in some parts of the US. Again, saturated fat consumption has been going down for decades. And yet, or at the very least in the recent decade, it's leveled out. But during this whole time, so insulin resistance has been skyrocketing. So there's clearly another variable here. And among the many possible variables, let's just focus on carbohydrates. But even still, in the, looking at them in the context of saturated fats, now you're thinking perhaps what on earth could dietary carbohydrate have to do with plasma saturated fat levels? We're not eating. You could eat you could be eating carbohydrates that don't have a speck of saturated fat in them. How could that possibly increase saturated fat? Well, it can. And of course, insulin is very relevant to this. So um, we know that high carbohydrate intake, particularly refined sugars and starches, because of the increase in insulin, is capable of activating a process in the liver called de novo lipogenesis. Some of you with a little bit of kind of Latin background, you're hearing some of the words here where you're hearing that it is the synthesis of new fat. So the liver is capable of taking carbons, including those from glucose, and turning them into saturated fats and then packaging up those saturated fats and releasing them into the body being transported on VLDL. So VLDL is going to be the vehicle that is transporting these fats and the fat that the liver is making is always going to be a saturated fat called palmitic acid or palmitate. So there are a couple studies that I want to highlight. The first one is Acheson, A-C-H-E-S-O-N, Acheson et al., 1988. This is old. That's the year that the Winter Olympics were in Calgary, Canada. I remember going. A banner year. All right. Um, this study found that when a person ate sufficient carbohydrates that the liver glycogen got filled up, but then continued to eat carbohydrates, which is very easy to do. Most people are doing this all the time. Most people never um, are restricting carbohydrates or fasting enough to even have their liver drop down even close to being zero. So we're always almost kind of filled up with our liver. So the study found, Atchison et al., 1988, that if someone ate sufficient carbs that the liver was filled and continued to eat carbs, which is virtually every person on the planet, that the liver is capable of converting the excess into fats, increasing plasma-saturated fats, all just because of the, the consumption of carbohydrates. Another study, Sevastianova is the name, S-E-V-A-S-T-I-A-N-O-V-A, -A Sevastianova, uh, et al., 2012. One, this was a short-term study finding almost the exact same thing, that the overfeeding of simple sugars increased liver fat, but also liver fatty acid, uh, saturated fat production. 
So this directly challenges the idea that sat dietary saturated fats are the problem in increasing body or plasma saturated fats. Um, this is suggesting that you can find that effect, increased plasma saturated fat, without even eating saturated fats. That Just in overindulging on carbs can do it. And of course, the more refined, the easier it is for all of this to happen. As a scientist, I have to admit that there is some human st studies that challenge that suggest saturated fats may be a problem in the context of a hypercaloric, high-carb diet. All right, those are two very, very specific caveats here that need to be mentioned. So there was a study published in the Diabetes Journal. This was published in 2018, so not too long ago. And in this study, again, they had a high-carb diet, but then had them overeat, so really getting hypercaloric with eating saturated fats, and monounsaturated fats, or just unsaturated fats in general. And they found that the group that was eating hypercaloric, high carb, satur high saturated fat had worse insulin resistance than the group that was eating high carb, high fat with the unsaturated group, that that group didn't have as bad as, of insulin resistance as the high saturated fat group. So for the sake of just blunt honesty, if you are eating a very high carb diet and you're going to indulge in a lot of fat, then saturated fats might might be a problem. Now, you've heard me before speak about the problem with high fat, high carb. Those should never be mixed. That is a particularly delicious and particularly fattening mix where you have the high carb stimulating insulin, which is going to signal to the fat cells to store energy. And then you have a lot of fat for those fat cells to then store. It makes it all the easier for the fat cells to get bigger. So high fat, high carb is a particularly vicious metabolic mix and should be generally avoided.